Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazeas here from The Automator. And again, we're going to talk about how we're using ChatGPT and AI in this last week in, in other some other scripts. Now stick around to the end because we have a couple specific auto hotkey things if you're using auto hotkey to, to help improve ChatGPT and some fun stuff with it. Yeah, um, to start right. off, I want to mention a video that we did last week. Just it was this big um, uh, insight I had of an idea where video is going and that it's going to be no longer be static. It'll be at some point dynamically adjusting to who you are, how it's being said. You know, if you have a certain gender or, or you know, type of, of a, you know, let's say like the news, they will adjust that to your preferences, right, to make you pay more attention. Um, yeah. It's really interesting they're using, you know, I'm sure at some point they'll have more input, but like the size of your dilation of your eyes. And even I was thinking about what phones, they have heartbeat stuff, right? When you're touching your phone, they can detect yeah, that. For sure. So. Oh, their their blood pressure went up some during this. We let's stick they, that clearly affects them. Like it's going to be wild. So um, check out that video when you get a chance. That's for sure. Now we we have been doing these videos in which we use ChatGPT in various ways. We find other resources and stuff like that, and then we talk a little bit about them. This time we you told me about some videos that you were watching. Actually, I think it was from the Microsoft CEO. Yeah, or something it was like an interview with the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal interviewed Satya Nadella. And it was just a really good, I I agreed with almost everything he was saying of the whole AI thing is coming. Look, it's not a linear, This why is it such a big deal? It's not a linear growth. It's exponential, right? Right. But, but here's one of the big things is, you know, it's a just another tool, right, that's going to enable us and give us leverage to do more productivity things, just like the Industrial Revolution did, right? Yeah. And you know, people were displaced during during the Industrial Revolution. And how did people who actually, you know, thrived during that time, what did they do? Was using it. it. Yeah, thing. they were using it. So yeah, the, right. I remember yeah. this guy that uh, said like, hey, your guys are talking too much about chat GPT and so on. Right. But he doesn't even understand that he is using chat GPT or AI in general without even noticing. A few days ago, I think I mentioned that I just noticed in my uh, window settings, that how right. Windows is using AI when you type. And I was like, I didn't know that Windows was using that. Like, I I didn't even notice. And it's still your point. Like, more and more companies are going to be using it, even if you don't even notice. Like, right. we talked about uh, Photoshop has been using AI for a little while. Yeah. For DaVinci Resolve, you just things. Said. Da Vinci Resolve right now is having some, some things that have to do with AI and removing audio and stuff like that. And again, it is just in getting into your programs, even if you don't like it. So better having knowledge now that is just happening than then being like, oh, I didn't know that they were collecting my information that way. Well, yeah, they will. That's for sure. So and, uh, let's, uh, let me bridge. You can tackle the next topic, but I'm going to bridge it because it, it happens to be the same guy, Thomas. Thomas from the HK Hero Group was like, yeah, yeah I, I'm kind of one of this because I don't want uh, Microsoft to have this, you know, stuff. <laughs> and, and you're like, yeah, they already have your data. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, they're seeing everything. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Like, uh, y y there's a lot of things that you don't think about that is already happening. So like, Ah, oh, I don't want Microsoft getting my data. Are you using OneDrive? Yeah, well, you are. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> there, there's no way you, they don't have it. Now, um, the next thing that we, it, that uh, same user, Thomas, actually sent you kind of like a, a, a tool, an AI tool as well, that it is called 85 and it you pass it a, a video. It watches it, watches it. I think it just grabs a transcribe, the transcription, sorry. And it just summarizes that for you. So you don't have to watch the video. You just give it a URL and it just tells you what the video is all about and it summarizes everything. Um, and and if bullet I remember points, right, I think, yeah. Yeah, the bullet points, but also timestamps next to the bullet points. So if you want to, you know, go follow up on that. specific story. thing, yeah, just go ahead and do that. Why? I remember That's like amazing. a year ago, I saw a very similar thing where it was like, oh, you can shove all your video into this and then search like baseball. And it would go through and flag, here's where baseball, you know, they have like baseball diamonds, baseball, whatever. Yeah, is mentioned. And it's really, really powerful. I'm actually curious now if, if I could pass it a video that is just music or a video that is just, it doesn't have nobody speaking, would it provide a summary of it? Because I'm guessing it's grabbing the captions or the transcription 
and doing it's a summary of that, and it's not now. actually watching the video, I think. I don't know. I, I'm sure some do, right? Okay. It, I, I, I would be curious about that one. Yeah, it'd be cool to take like a video, like you said, it has just music, like sky, um, I forget what they're called, skydiving or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And just see if it actually tells you these guys were skydiving and right. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, would would it would it actually right. notice that, or is just like the summary? I think we both agree. If it's not doing it now, it will be at it's some soon. Point. Yeah. yeah. So because we do have AI vision from Google, for example, right. that you pass it an image and it knows what what it is. So just imagine that now I pass a video and Google Vision would actually be able to tell that, right? Yeah, so, I remember a video from them where they're walking down the street with their phone and just walking down a street and it's flying bike, car, yeah, you know, just yeah. tagging stuff all right. Wow, really That's crazy. Amazing. The next one was just it was I was writing um and I and I do actually write some of the blog posts, but I've been lately using ChatGPT a lot. But it's a blend, right? I get it to write the post and then I add stuff to, to, you know, try to promote things and whatnot. And I couldn't think of a certain word and I'm like, Oh, why don't I just ask chat GPT? Unlike a thesaurus where you have to kind of give it direction this, you still give it direction, but much looser. Like you're having a, Hey, what's that word that means this, this, and this, and it nailed it exclusive. I think is what it said. I'm like, perfect. That's the one <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have the idea, but you don't remember the word. That's a great way of just, having just some remember, feedback about what it is yeah it's like having a personal assistant that is an at least i don't want to say expert in every area but they're at least but they're better than alexa right yeah. don't listen to me <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> no that's true um i do think that that is it, that of i have an idea give me a specific word is basically the same that i that we do when we say like I have this group of steps, give me a function. Mm -hmm. So it's basically we're doing something similar in the sense of I have an idea of what I want to achieve and give me a function that does that. And I was doing something similar with the uh, create elapsed time. So here's the thing, calculating dates, a nightmare in any language is a nightmare. Dates are very complicated for calculations. Most, and yeah. yeah, and for, I was trying to do uh, to create a function that would, I give it a time and a, a starting time. And then right now it would calculate how much time has passed between the two points. There are some functions available on the forums, but they're very basic because they actually say, you know, calculating years, months, and, day, and days is really annoying. So they just calculate hours and seconds and so on. So I said, hey, let's have ChatGPT do that. Now, um, I can, I can maybe in another time, we're going to show the summary of everything I did, but let me go ahead and tell you, there's a few things that I learned about it. So first of all, I told it to do a function and then I grabbed that same code, pasted it in, and I just told it, tell me what problems this function might have. And it listed a bunch of things. Hey, this function is not calculating this. It's not doing this. It's, it's assuming that it's doing this. And I just told it, okay, fix number two, three, and four, because it gave me a list, right? So I, yeah. What I want to say is, and it's a credit to you, because it's it's something a lot of people, a lot of really smart people, like I will bet you Lexicos would not have done this, right? Is I remember talking to you about it and it said, this does blah, 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 except for leap years. And, right. and then you started going, you started going on a path and you're like, wait a minute, I, I got to get this done. Hey, right. you know what? write it without taking into account leap years, just disregard it. And it did it. Right. And it was like, holy hell. Right. Like, I, you know, most people wouldn't go, they'd have to get it perfect. Right. right. They're like, you know, it's, it's a freaking leap year. It happens every four years, whatever. Right. Yeah, like I'm going to be off by yeah. such a tiny thing. So some of the examples I told it, Hey, give me this. What are the issues with it? And it says, well, the potential issues are that it does not validate the months and fields for leap years and does stuff like that. And I said, it gave me a list of eight things. And I said, like, okay, ignore one, two, four, five, six, and seven and eight, and just give me the answers for this one. And it just ignored the other ones because I didn't care really much about that right now. I didn't want the, the function to be 100% perfect. I just wanted this one you thing know. that it was really important to be perfect, that one, yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that that one is fixed.
It reminds me of if you ever look to find a regular expression that will flag a valid email address, it is insane how complicated that thing is. And yet you can write something in one one hundredth the size that gets 95% of them or maybe even exactly. higher. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. That, that should be good enough, right? But is yeah. so that one was one of the things that I learned with it. And second of all, I learned about... Um, telling it, hey, generate a list of expectations, so tests. So I had the function already, and oh, then I said, well, okay, so pass some values to it and tell me what I should be expecting to verify that the function is working correctly. And it did. It was really having some differences, and then after I determined that the differences was about leap years, I told it, okay, make the tests so that it doesn't care about leap years and stuff like that. And it did. So it was a very good learning experience, but using it to create a function like that helped me out a lot. I think we then made a video recently about um, batching and stuff like that. You're, <laughs> how sure. did you come up with that idea? Yeah. Um, well, the idea actually came up with because because of the pillbox, right? If it was yeah, really yeah, that's the one. That, yeah. <laughs> but what was cool was was I was like, okay, well, what are some other you know examples of it? Okay, I did that, and I had ChatGPT come up with those. But what I loved about it was I said, what what's important to take into account, or how should I do this? And it came up with the context of like, hey, things by location, things by how tasks are done. How would you group? Like, how do you spot things you should batch and I would have come up with two or three. It came up with like six or seven. And I was like, wow, this That's is awesome. Better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, I, I noticed also that we used it to create a piece of code that would bold the selected word in Excel. So if you are in Excel, or I would say this would work for Word or any of those right. Microsoft Com Object programs, and what you wanted to was just hit a hotkey or something, and it would just bold it, um, then... It, well, not not bolded because sometimes when you select a cell in Excel, it bolds the cell. But if you're in the cell, in the editing mode and you select text, it wouldn't bold it because it has to see has to be the whole cell. Isn't that right? I don't think so. Like, can you select part of the text I, in I a cell? Yeah, I believe. Right. You so, can. so you made it so that you just did something, and it would create the com oh. object to do that. Yeah, my that goal when I was tested was I was curious what it would offer up, and I didn't follow up on it yet. But what I wanted to do was to say, "Hey, hey, ChatGPT, here's my Excel function library. Uh -huh. Right now, any time that I write something for Excel, look in here and see if you can pull something from this. Um, and that way, it takes advantage of the thing you know that I had already but it, have. Okay, yeah, because I was just testing first to see how it actually implemented the com object and. We we both know we've run into stuff where getting the active Excel file when there's more than one is that can be a little problematic. And so that's yes. what I'm like, oh, we need to provide that one definitely. I think the other stuff it gave me would be great, but that whole yeah. connection to an active thing that's is for sure. actually persnickety. Yeah. Yeah. One one we did during the live Fridays call, um, which every Friday morning at uh, nine central we have a live you know, hour where we help people. And I think it was during that hour was the hero group, but Jean Lalonde from QAP was there. And I'm like, well, Jean was talking about something and I went to ChatGPT and I said, hey, what are some of the advantages of ChatGPT or whatever, of, excuse me, of QAP, quick mm -hmm. access pop-up? And it came up with this big list and it nailed it, like of all these things, the benefits of using it. And, right. and Jean, <laughs> it was like, Huh. You know. Yeah, like it, it happened the same with with when we passed the the hero membership. Like right. They said like, what are the benefits of the hero membership? Yeah. It gave us a list that I was it was nailed down, and I was like, the only difference here was that it talked about a forum and stuff that we don't have a forum, but everything else was exactly it's a Telegram right. group though. Like it just you know, it, it we have yeah, that, that's true. But like not, yeah. in a forum, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, it depends how you define forum. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, <laughs> it was good. But after that, we then started checking more and more tools. We saw this one, Lumen 5, that is for helping yeah. you creating social uh, videos for social media. Yeah, it awesome. does a good it's job for like yeah. Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Yeah, nice, powerful ones. And actually, I need to share it. I think um, I think it was the um, 
the Steve AI video. I didn't put it in the list. Oh, right. Oh, but yeah, I, you I created a video. It. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you made yeah. a video like that. Yeah. Yeah. In a couple minutes, I said, I gave it, you know, I said, create a video for the automator mentioning how amazing we are. I forget what I said, right? About auto hockey. It created like, what was it? About a minute and a half or a yeah. minute, somewhere in there. A minute or something. Uh, it, it faded between stuff. And what I realized, I only played with the tool for like five minutes, right? It was a free account. But I realized it first did it and it had some random pictures. And then I'm like, oh, I can click here and change the picture that the voiceover in the text is on. Oh, look, I can update the text that's on the screen. I can like very quickly cranked out this video and with music even. And it had the music a little too high. That took me, it was a little weird and the quirkiness of using it. But honestly, 99%, I'd say like it was amazing. Um, right. Wow. Like it was very, cl- I wouldn't use it. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't use it for a YouTube video. I like might use it. Video, yeah. Right. I might use it to say, Hey, here's on the automator, like on my LinkedIn page. Here's, mm-hmm. you know, here's the automator. Right. Right. But I'm not, which is part of the other thing was people were like, well, you can tell it's not a human talking. And I'm like, well, that, yeah, that's, but mm-hmm. just because that's the case doesn't mean that you can't take that into incorporation and plan it. And Make your presentation done by a robot, right? And be like, I am, I am the human robot. You know, I'm, I'm a robot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About the and actually, I, I think, the, the, yeah, yeah, it is just like that. Like, there are some our, things. Our, yeah, for me, our, our, my master is so advanced. He's making me do the work for him to create this video for you, right? Like exactly. that's how much they automate. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, but in general, I think it is about the expectation of. Yeah. Yeah, you want to expect to, uh, you want it, uh, you want it to be as human as possible. I don't think that's the expectation that we should have. Is AI? Right. I hopefully we will be able to distinguish AI from a normal person. So the more as a robot, it sounds the better for me because I can tell. But if I cannot right. tell, then that yeah, is a problem. That's when you don't right? like yeah. it. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I wouldn't like right. it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The next one, which to me was really, it has a lot of implications, but Replica, it's it's with a K. I'll put it up on there on the screen. Um, it's an AI like companion. So you can create a friend or a girlfriend or whatever and, you know, start chatting with it and talking and build this relationship. Yeah, and the more is, you use is, it, yeah, the more you can customize it. This is where the lines are going to be blurred, yeah. right? This is where I'm, the lines are going to be blurred. I, I'm, I'm both concerned and excited because... <laughs> I've I've had you know friends that, that were elderly and in homes where their family and friends just basically forgot them, right? Yeah. And like suddenly you have someone that will listen to you, and I, I honestly think it's going to get to a point where they're going to feel like it's a real person, you know, right. like that someone cares and right. it can fill that need when you know you're down and out and they're still. It's like you know dogs, right? Dogs love you regardless, um, but if you yeah. can't have a dog, hey, yeah, exactly, this might fill that niche, yeah. Well, that's the point. If you have seen like Black Mirror, <laughs> they go into something similar uh, regarding that, that you can purchase a bot to replace a loved one that just died or something like that. And the implications of that or how the person feels about it is really, so we're getting close to that. <laughs> yeah. Now, the next one was Quillbot which paraphrases your writing. Isn't that kind of like summarizing whatever yeah, you did? I- but yeah, so it's just summarizing something i think chat gpt is doing that but here's the difference chat gpt is free during the research phase right so these type of bots or whatever might keep a free plan if they have whatever so but mention why here in a couple of minutes why i'll be sharing my screen and not you <laughs> yeah chat gpt on my end uh place limit i think it had to do with the with the test that we were doing we were making a test about the context and i passed it seven thousand tokens like many words i passed many words and it seemed to me that they flagged me and say like hey too many requests in one hour so you cannot do requests for one more hour and i was like yeah i i think that's fair they're actually yeah. limiting because if many people using it at once is hogging their servers but that's the thing if you have another service like Quillbot, even though it does similarly the same, as they're earning money from it, because that's the difference with ChatGPT, they're supposedly not, not earning money from it. So if you have a service like this one, which is earning money, they probably will keep a free version and it would work a little bit better than, you know, um, just ChatGPT itself, because ChatGPT is research. By well, the way. And there'll be niches regardless, right? Right, yeah. Uh, 
Chat GPT right now is the, you know, the everything is everyone's talking about it. And it does a lot. That was one actually I saw uh, in a video they were talking about with a bunch of AI experts. Mm-hmm. Will there be one AI tool that does images and video and audio and the chatting, or will there be a mix? And they couldn't come to consensus, right? Because like I how neural networks both. work and stuff, they were like, I yeah, no one. They, yeah. Agree. yeah. And I'm like, I would say both. There will be a general one that everybody knows. But then there will be so many niche One-off ones niche. that are that, right. that are really good at what they do that you're going right. to say, instead of using this one, I'm going to yeah. use that one. Well, see, that's where I, I agree. I understand what you're saying. And from the human perspective, that's 100% absolutely true, right? Jack, jack of all trades. trades. Jack of all it's trades, master, master of none, right. right. Um, and so usually you're better at some things. And others. when you talk about it being a computer, you know, would that be? I don't know if that's the same solutions. Yeah, I would right. say like, I would say so. Is still because the research, for example, ChatGPT is a very good example of that. It is really good at chatting, but if you go ahead and step out into the programming side, it might fail more. Yeah, but right, but right if you now, train I'm, one I'm, that is just for that one language, it would not fail as much. I would but the say. Fact that, yeah, but the fact that it's a program. And yeah. you could at some point just say, okay, use that knowledge base. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I think yeah. I don't I, I think we're thinking in human context instead yeah, of I understand yeah. context. At some I'm point, Chad GPT will I'm just saying read, how I read all the other bots and stuff like yeah. oh god. <laughs> Skynet. Yeah. We have yeah. no doubt. So the next one, um, and it's AI PRM for prompt AI prompt is kind of I think with for SEO. It was interesting because it, it is helping you decide um uh, Give it context. And so when you type in a search word, it actually, it's a Chrome extension. And when you type in something, it will set the stage for you, which is kind of, it's funny because I saw this in a video and I was already working on something we're going to share here in a bit for AutoHotKey. But it does a good job of helping you do much more than what you just type in, like a simple thing, right? Because it's basically shoving in a bunch of crap surrounding what you type in. They've wrapped, you know, wrapped what you type. Right. So it's giving it context, which... Is good. We, um, we're gonna have some context for our hotkey in a bit. Uh, we did have Ava emotional soundtrack music. That's for people who are, you know, if you need music and you need to calm down, yeah, try that one. But you can create it where you could add it to your YouTube videos and whatnot, right? Like, and yeah. it's not copyrighted, so you can oh, do right. it. Yeah, because it's created by AI. Right. Right. Um, the AI image enlarger, uh, this is, it's another, I, like I've seen, I'm trying now to not keep putting up things that are, we've already seen. So these are new things. And, and we, I know I've seen one before that is, but it had some interesting stuff. So I thought I'd mention it here. Yeah. The crisp AI is the background noise reduction and remover, which again, we have seen some other AI tools that we have mentioned that have to do with sound. But this one in general is, is just for that one thing, noise right. reduction and remover. Well, so it's basically, yeah. And in the video that I was watching, they did it on a live. It connects to your system for a live thing. So even oh, though we know wow, Zoom does a good right. job, you're talking about yeah, this yeah. the day, but it, you can use it as a, a filter, basically. It's kind right, of, I'm okay, guessing it works it. like OBS does, like with the virtual camera. Mm-hmm. Like it takes mm-hmm. what you do, runs it through its thing, and then pushes it in. It shows up probably as another mic, is my guess. Right. Oh. Very likely. That would be yeah. good, so, actually. So, well, we talked about that actually with OBS because we've you both used OBS to filter stuff. And it's compared to Zoom, it's not nearly as good at filtering out the crap, but it, it takes some love. But, you know, maybe we could use that tool to shove it in, in front of OBS, you know. It'd be yeah, that would be interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. And right. again, soon OBS will be able to connect to those bots directly. So now you have OBS connecting right. as a filter, just add a filter and it's going to be one of those bots. Just right. imagine, that would be great. Yeah. All right, so now let's jump into sharing the screen here. So Ray from the Hero Group also, he mentioned this cool. This is a pretty cool site in the sense that you can, um, futurepedia.io, so we'll, we'll put the link in the, it's on the webpage where we have all the stuff, right? Um, all the links are there. And yeah, that's amazing. Search, good, right. Yeah, you can search, um, say, you can search by topic, you can filter, and it will give you a list of items like that. Seems ridiculously small, um, but maybe <laughs> New, popular, interesting. But it's a great way to to look for AI tools. You can hit discover. I played with this. It just kind of randomly throws up stuff. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. 
but there were i think it told you somewhere here how many oh 682 at the moment right in 48 categories so but yeah this is going to be in the thousands soon that's right soon. yeah yeah, yeah right. that's it's gonna it's they, they say that they update it daily right so yeah just to imagine so it, it's a nice cool one now another one actually provided by ray was um let's go to uh, this is actually an example of that one, the AI prompt. So I typed in like auto hotkey. Uh, um, yeah, at the I, bottom, at the bottom, I see the word. It wrote all this. When you go back to it, this is what it surrounded my thing with. And it shows, yeah, here's the keyword auto hotkey, but then it gives you other ones, right? So this is the, um, this is was the thing I used. What I wanted to demonstrate was this share button. This is the Chrome extension that Ray mentioned. So I can click share. Um, and now if I give this to anybody, they will see both what I asked and this, right? Which, cause right now there's no easy way to, to share your actual, both the prompt and the results, you know, it's right. all. That's for sure. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't, the, the, the chat GPT page does not have the share functionality right. built in, right? But this extension is great. And yeah. it gives you kind of like the whole history of the conversation, which is great. Right. So let's get back to here now this tool and let me let me i'll show it just real briefly here this is a script we wrote using uia uh to and actually maybe I'm, I'm curious now that we just did our other stuff with um with this the uia browser so, so yeah so this is what i meant at this point i just used the uia interface Right. But I'm connecting the same way as the browser one does. So the yep. browser one it does is just minimizing how you do the UIA interface like I'm doing right now. Right. But in this case, yeah, definitely we could try the other way right. and just grab the whole the whole HTML and do the same as the share right. extension is doing because right. I have access to the whole HTML. Right. So I'm going to hit control. Uh, you go to your chat GPT page, hit control G. And what it does is it rips all this here. And right now it's sending it to me, right? Um, but you could obviously easily tweak this script to send it to whoever. So here's the list of things from that that we ripped from the side, right, of what we've done. Oh, and look, so now I finally have a show more. So we yeah, we will, we will do that in a second. Yeah, yeah. At the time, we lost all of our history. Believe me, I had a, a lot more than this. Um, and we lost all of our history. But now I have a show more button so we can update the script. Um, but yeah, that but is, basically it creates kind of like a little summary of whatever you have been using it for for this particular week, which yeah. is great for, for us to keep the discussion going about things that we use it for to have ideas for other right. people about, hey, these are interesting stuff that we can be doing with AI that not everybody will come up with. So this is good um, for us, not only for us to be talking to you about things, Maybe you can share your uh, your summary, right. and we might come up with you might come up with something that we have never seen, and we say like, "Oh, that's a great idea!" Right. Like, "Hey, I might that's, want to do that too." Right? That's what we we've realized early on was ChatGPT is capable of so much more than what we're thinking about, right? Yeah. Like we, you know, in most people, when you see a new tool. They think, oh, that's what it does, and that you, you can't you can't use what you've done in the past as like a, a way to summarize what it does because it's just kind of mm, endless, yeah. right? It's an expert or close to expert, and I think when version four is out of ChatGPT, it will be an expert in everything. <laughs> so if you have an expert at your fingertips, right? You can ask it anything, which actually leads us into this next one. So what we did, but and it was kind of based on that other one, but I was having the same thoughts also. Was what if we you know, right now, ChatGPT doesn't necessarily really know auto hotkey very well, right? And right. sometimes it does things in a certain way and we say, no, 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 I want it this way. Why don't we set the stage? Why don't we instantiate ChatGPT for an auto hotkey script? So yes. Jason and I were working through it. Let me bring over, I'm going to bring over the Word doc just to show. Um, and the stuff in red is more things that we think maybe those are options, like those are preferences yeah. that you might choose. So this would be the beginning prompt, right? That we we say we're gonna hey, this thread is gonna be dedicated it, yeah. to auto hotkey scripts. Um, and by the way, for some reason, oh, also as Ace mentioned, in line when you're giving it code, you do one tick mark surrounded by the stuff. 
But if it's multi-line, you do the three. I thought it was always the three. So no, no, yeah. No, it's just one here and here. But sometimes when it would give us auto hotkey code, it would be using just the equals, not the colon. Right. And so we're like, why don't we, you know, teach it at the beginning? Hey, this is right. this, this is I what I what I'm expecting. Yes. Yeah. That I want it camel case. I want all my variables camel case. I also want to set like a minimum and a maximum character length. Um, it, it, you know, this is again that could be a preference, but I think it's good habit to have. You know, longer variable names really help. Also, especially with functions and classes, classes, right? Like those. Why not give them long, clear names? Um, we also don't want to. We want to try to keep it within. You know, auto hockey. Don't use external libraries that we then have to go get. It's yeah. It's things with auto hockey it's compared to python like the python dependency after dependency yeah after exactly going. um every, so this is one also which it, it's kind of weird it annoyed me a lot <laughs> you're like hey create this and it does it and then it mentions something you're like that's not a function and, but, then and usually it tells you this function is not implemented you should create it and i say like go ahead and implement it right. come on so why not tell this at the beginning right right um and and this was an interesting one too so both the the definitions of functions and classes should be at the end of the script not yes. the calling of them and the reference but the the definitions uh, most of us like them at the end you can have them of course wherever you want but right um now you know i like and this is this is my preference it's not what isaiah does but it's fine it doesn't matter it's your preference right i law on an inline but i think the most important point is saying tell it to always annotate right. whether it's annotate you know inline or or, yeah. or you know multi-line but it's it's how still, it annotates it right. is your preference if it is in right. line if it's at the top if it is later I don't, I don't care yeah i think this one maybe this one should be up here because most people i think would rather use functions than commands right so it's a nice one and that is when if possible exactly because right. not always there are sometimes right. you cannot do that but yeah yeah and and here's another one uh, personally i would rather have it force an expression when you're doing stuff like this um so don't don't use the double percent signs percent around signs, variables right and again preference but um yeah uh less this, this, one, like, one, this one was all me right like as i don't i don't really mind having a less efficient code i want to understand it so right. hey if you have the option now depending on who you are if you're geek dude or, or isaiah or tank or someone i would me, need more efficient yeah, instead you, of yeah. readable, you whatever, say, because I will, as much yeah. as possible, I don't care, right? The funny thing is that I would say, give me a, an efficient solution and put a comment about what it does. And that way I have the best solution, but also have the explanation right. of what it's doing. So, yeah. Well, but again, it, it, which also has to do, do you plan to be updating and editing it, right? If if that's the case, I because the, the yeah. first case, if I don't plan to ever do that, I'd be with what you said. Yeah, Make it definitely. As optimized as you want, and definitely comment on it. But I, I don't plan to actually update it. We did one earlier with the URL encoding one, and I'm like, I would never go adjust that, right? Like, <laughs> what? yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I much prefer the one true brace style for functions and classes and loops and if statements and stuff, where you put the curly brace on the same line. Yeah, is, is, is a lot of most other people. I don't think do that. I just. No, the, I'm I'm the exception. Most of no, the people... no, no. I I disagree. I, most people I see do it more. M let me rephrase. Most people who are programmers. I, yes. I, that's the thing. So, uh, in my yeah. experience, when I go out there, I see Lexicos doing it, but everybody else does want to brace because it is supposedly better. I just don't like it for other reasons. Like yeah, if I want to yeah, comment something out, I can't because of the brace. Right. That's all. <laughs> but uh, that's all. Um, I. Well, I added this. This is why earlier we were recording and we kind of stopped. Uh, like I went silent because you mentioned you had it automatically building your tests, right? And so maybe we'll rewrite this a little differently. But I'm like, why not have that as part of a you know create some tests to, to or or mention where there might be problems, right? Like yes, that that was something like, yeah. hey, what are the problems with this code? I right away do that. But and, then you have some things that should be added almost in all scripts, which v right. one scripts at least, because some of these things are right. now the default in V2. Right. Right. Which, which we've, we tried like hell to get it to write V2 stuff. And it's- Yeah, it is it not, is not, it's not doing it, no. right? <laughs> but the, you know, the, this should be a default thing anyway, yeah. like it should have to be in there, whatever. But the no environment, this one we were talking about, it might depend on what you're doing, the tech windows on, um, it, but, I think for the most part, that's for usually good people, to have on. Yeah, for most people, I agree. Yeah. Um, list lines on, send mode input, set batch lines minus one. Again, that like that in V2 is automatically done, correct? Yes. 
Yeah. That's right. And the no env is, is not needed either. Okay, cool. Um, the set working directory, that's a great one to have in there. The and set title this... match mode is also absolutely in V2, yeah. in V2 is also like a default. Oh, cool. So yeah. Right. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that one either. And then just because this is how I, you know, have it is, hey, add these hotkeys into this is built, by the way, this isn't something you would leave in your script. This is when you're developing it, right? right. So a hotkey to edit it, to pop it open, a hotkey. This is the most um, important one, as Ace and I both agree, if you're doing yeah. any, sort of, any sort of looping, anything Whatever. like that. Having a hotkey that would exit the app is yeah. needed. Yeah. And then um, I like to reload. I also have a couple for lo actually executing the script, but um, I didn't, that's not something most people do. So mm -hmm. I left that out of this. But basically, we're going to take this and we'll, we'll make it available in script. It'll take all of... No, you just collapsed it. Just click on the left. Yeah, there. I know that where did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right. select the whole thing. Yeah. yeah control it. It. So we copy it. Now we did a little testing also. I think that that worked. So you just paste it there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it actually the first. Um, you know what? I saw this in the video. We, we should add. I'm going to add it here. Um, please respond. Do this with a request for. So let's see if that's the right way to say it. So when I did this before, yeah. when I did this earlier, it actually wrote an auto hockey script. Said, "Sure, I'll take that into account," and it wrote one, which I wasn't my goal. Yeah, that's not what I wanted no. to do. Right. So maybe we add something in here that says these are all things to take into account. I, now I, ask me for an auto hot yeah, script. Uh, actually, script. yeah. So uh, in general, how I did it in my uh, on my end was that I told it the following prompts. Uh, all your answers should follow these rules for all the prompts I make. So it knew that it was for the prompts, not to start with that one. So let me see if I find it real quickly about uh, what I had it. I told, yeah, so for the following prompts, follow these rules. And I gave rules so it knows that what I just gave are rules that are not, it's not to act on that yet. So I, that what you just did for whenever I request out of hotkey scripts is kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, but, but yeah, just sure to add that for the following prompts, follow these rules, then you paste the rules and you're good to go. Now, the, the good, the good thing that we did was, we tried to check if ChatGPT would forget about those rules. Now, here it is just following the rules. You got your explanation. You got your code. Which, by the way, one of the other optional things you might say up above is don't don't write the explanation. Explain, right, yeah. So don't explain or, yourself. Or right. make sure you explain it, depending right. on... Depending on what you want. Yeah. Yeah. But here, if you go up, let, let's see what it did. Yeah. But that is interesting. But here it is doing whatever I told what I what I said. This is really annoying. I, I don't like it. So it created the function, but it's referring to a different function that now is down here. But here it is also calling another function that URI encoded, but that one is not defined anywhere. It's right here. Oh, is it? Yeah, but that one is calling a different function. It's yeah. right. No, oh, that's sorry. not the one. Yeah. So it, it, it is using a function that is not defined. So it is saying... Well, anyway, yeah. So yeah. mileage may vary for now. Right. It right. is true, but that's the point. That, that's one of the things that I haven't figured out. I haven't quite figured out how to tell it not to do that. It just used the function that doesn't really exist. Well, I would say, please make sure any function you use either exists or you create it for me, right? Right, so, yeah. But, and again, it, it's not perfect right now, but these are... But it's the a good, good thing is the rules. Right? Now, the rules, is it following the rules? Yes, it yeah. actually added right. the things. It is using the uh, verbal assignment. I, I, don't, I did not see comments. Well, I did see the comments here. So it is commenting the code. So it's following most of the rules. It's just that we didn't really out oh, here is forcing an expression instead of you know uh -huh. just putting a message right. box so it is following all the rules we gave it right. the hotkeys are at the bottom after the outer execute section yeah. so it is 
clearly understanding what we wanted to do. The only thing is that I don't know how to tell it not to use functions that don't exist. So well, I just anyway, we'll, yeah, we will I figure that one out. But it will be part of my my rules to follow before I actually ask for a script. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know why my hot string didn't work there, but it's all right. We'll see what it does here. What I, what I, earlier yeah, when I did this, I it actually commented on here's where your auto exec section is. Oh, and right. I'm, yeah. Really nice. Wow. It put it in a function. Interesting. Right. It didn't follow the 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 rules there right. though. So right. this is this is part of what I was testing before. It does follow it, it, now th this is interesting because it did follow other rules, but that right. one it didn't. Right. So it is kind of like your mailage may, may yeah. vary, right? right? It's not 100 percent well all the time, but it got you there most of the yeah. of the part. And this is one of those once someone or we do it or whatever creates our own environment um, where we can be even more elaborate and clear. It, I have great faith that it will do what we say, right? Like yeah. it'll be more strict on it, which also because in the web ver this version we can't control the creativity in this level, but in your private version, there's a way to to tell it yes. how creative to be, right? And that might. I would say. I would say. A few things uh, in my on my end when I created my rules, I said be as factual as possible because if you don't say that, it would be creative. It would try to do something interesting, but I'm not wanting that. I want the facts. I want something. And programming is really factual. It's either or, right? So it's either true or false. So um, that is one of the things. And I, when we did the text, the test for the context. We fitted like 7,000 tokens. We, we actually fitted a lot of text to see if it would forget about the rules. But in our testing, it didn't forget about the rules that I set because I told it something right. incorrect. I told it, hey, in this thread, two plus two equals five. It was like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's wrong. And I was like, hold on. In a game environment, this is, and then it's, it, it followed that rule. And after I fed it a lot of, you know, summaries, try this, try that, I understood based on a frequently asked question, how long does ChatGPT takes to forget stuff? They said about 4,000 tokens. After that, it would kind of like forget about stuff. We fed it more than 7,000 tokens, and it still remembered the, the rule that I had set up for that particular thread. So... Again, we don't know at which point it forgets about the rules, but um, at least for and and if it forgets, just paste that again, and it will right. just continue which, which, that. So, yeah, that's, that's what we talked about putting this in a hot string, and so right. yeah, just paste it again. Breath. That's it, right? So yeah, I think this is very good, and I like the fact that I could just specify some rules for it to follow all the time, and that's it. Yeah, so uh, check out the the page where we have the links if you're interested, and then um, get that script if you don't mind. Share how you're using AutoHotKey. You can either put it in the comments or just run our script and send us the results. Uh, yeah. It'd be great. It, and again, it's not actually telling. You know, it's a summary of what you did. So it's it's it, not. It's the one that ChatGPT creates itself. So whatever is on the left side is exactly that what is there. So right, yeah. it's not the prompts themselves. It's just how are you using it. So uh, thank you for watching and please like the video if you learned something new. It really helps us out a lot, gets more views. And you know, let us know if you want us to make more videos, keep going on this topic. I thought about it and I'm like, you know, it because ChatGPT is such uh, a leverage, you know, it, it makes us so much more productive. That's why all of us within AutoHotKey, because we already see AutoHotKey is a great way to be more efficient, right? Be more yes. productive. That's why for us, we, this is the new shiny object of like, <laughs> Now, I'm going to be that yeah, much more productive. Right. Right? So um, that's, that's why right. we'll be keeping up these videos and, and the post of just like, here's how we're using it just to brainstorm because it's so new and it's so easy to not realize. Like we've gotten definitely better in the last couple of weeks at deferring to it to ask questions. Um, but at first it was, we would ask it a question and then take what it said and then solve things. And we're like, just 
feed it back to it, man. Like, you know, yeah. just ask it again to do this. Yeah. All right. Thanks, sure. everyone. Cheers. Bye.